Hello. I'm Stanislav. My name is Stanislav. Hello, uh, I'm Andre. I was speaking in English. Okay, so we both uh, share the same language. Uh, uh, you probably are asking yourselves what uh, are we doing uh, today here and uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, will it be running? Well, yes, it'll be a little bit of running and uh, also other uh, topics. But we would like to share to you some um, some of our uh, life experiences and um, also uh, share with you the way we are taking decisions. I think this is uh, this is very important in our life. And uh, also, you maybe wonder yourself why uh, why are we two on this stage? Why are we sharing the stage? Where we are, me and Stan are very good friends. Uh, there are some different things about us, as you probably noticed, and one of them is uh, the hairstyle there, okay? And, but uh, there are also a lot of uh, things in, com in common that we have. Uh, first of all, we are male, okay? Uh, we are former uh, musicians, and then uh, we are passionate runners. We run uh, marathons, ultra marathons, and other endurance uh, events. Then we both serve uh, our country in the army. Um, also, we are um, we have a regular uh, program in a company. So uh, actually, it's the same company. We're colleagues. Also, we support the uh, same social uh, causes, and uh, also we are married. Uh, we have a total of six children. Uh, Stan has four. Uh, I have two. I'm trying to catch up with uh, with Stan. I hope I will, <laughs> yeah, I will succeed. Um, and we are very happy. All right, and. Uh, Every day we, um, the main word is uh, it's action, okay, we, um, we act in order to have a fulfilling life and uh, we love to, to share um, what we do with uh, other people, we, hopefully you hope we, uh, one day uh, everybody will be happy and we're sure that being happy it's a matter of uh, taking good decisions. Right. Yeah, each day we make a lot of decisions. Some of them are conscious, some of them are unconscious. We were talking about it before at one of the previous speeches. And uh, some of them are under our control, some of the factors that are very much defining our decisions. Some of them are beyond our control. This is the economic crisis, this is the earth spinning around the sun, this is uh, our neighbor partying all nights long. So there are many things that do not depend on us. But I believe that at least 50% of what's happening in our life depends on us and we are in the driving seat of it. And at least in order to make our life meaningful, we have to be in the driving seat. So that's why we're here. That's why we're active, as Andre said, and that's why we want to share our concept of it. But let's start with the beginning, with the creation. And uh, Andre has a great, a great story about the creation. Yeah, um, exactly 37 years ago, uh, my parents um, have taken a decision uh, with deep importance in my life. Can you, can you guess uh, which one is this? Uh, which decision did they take? Not to use the condom. Not to use the condom. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know if they had the condoms back then, but uh, besides that, um, well, my parents uh, were uh, there in, uh, they were having, I think, 20 years old. They were 20 years old. They were students uh, at the university, Babish Boy in Cluj. They were just starting their, their adult life, uh, having fun, you know, all the things that uh, the university comes up with. And uh, there I came, unexpected, you know. So uh, they had to take a decision and their first reaction, because they were very young, was to get rid of me. And um, because abortion was illegal, um, they tried alternative ways. And one of them was my mother to get extremely drunk with red wine and pushing furniture, you know, in the room. I don't know if you know this method. But uh, it seemed that uh, I not only was the fastest out of a few million, you know what, but I also was very stubborn, so I refused to leave. And um, a few weeks after this, uh, this event, my, par my parents had a talk with uh, some uh, friends from uh, psychology. And um, after this talk, my parents had taken a very good decision that uh, I will be born and 37 afterwards to, to talk to TEDx uh, Reading. So uh, here I am. <laughs> okay, thank you once again. I think Stan has a similar uh, uh, story. Yes, yeah, I'm somewhere in the Hindi abortion story as well, but let's not establish an abortion black here. So uh, 
Thank you, man, for, for making this decision to leave me here. Uh, so what we wanted to share with you is a concept. It's a mental map that we came up together in a way because we share many things with Andre. A mental map to share with, the, with you, which are the important things in life related to decision making. And uh, in this mental map, we came up to three important points, three important pointers. The first one is being aware. Being aware, understanding the concept, understanding the situation. A ballerina, a great ballerina, her competencies and talents in a banking institution doesn't make any sense. So that's why context is important, awareness is important. Awareness about ourselves, we are the biggest challenge of everything. Awareness linked to learning as well, because we learn every single day. The second pointer is the motivational system. Those factors, those values, and those moral principles that are the roots and the triggers of what we think and what we do. And number three is just making it happen. Perform, and perform as high as possible. And let me start with the first one. Being aware, understand the reality having the knowledge of what's going on around. And let me tell you a story about this. You probably saw, for those people who, can, who could see everything on the movie, that we were musicians. This is one of the commonalities that we had with Andre. So I was 22 years ago, I am 47 now. 22, 23 years ago I was a musician, I was a professional musician. Actually, in my student's life, both in the high school and the university, I was mainly a musician rather than, than, than a student and then an economist. It was a good life, a lot of fans, concerts, money, but the things change. So the life does, is not always to mean to, to, to be meant to be good and, and, and glorious. So in Bulgaria, in Bulgaria, in Bulgaria, as it is in Romania, in, 19, in 1989, at the end of the year, something happened. The revolution, the change, the transition, the political system collapsed. And along with it, the social system, the economic system, and the life of many of us. So it was quite frustrating. And uh, I already had a family, and I had my little boy, who is 22 years old now. And it was quite a misery at this moment. Nobody was interested in music. I liked music, but I couldn't turn my living out of it. So I started working different things. I went back to the radio, because I used to work in the National Radio of Bulgaria. And one day, when I was going back from work, a friend of mine who was working in the bank mm, saw me and she said, Oh, Stan, it's great to see you. You know what? Our new CEO is looking for young guys like you just graduated from the economic school to hire. Why don't you apply? I didn't pay the attention. I was very tired. I went back at home. But then I saw my son. My son was one year old. He could walk, but he couldn't walk. It was the winter of 1990. There was nothing in the shops. It was really a collapse. Everything collapsed at this moment. And I remember his first winter boots. I hired from a lady who saw me on a line because my, I was with my boy waiting to buy something. I do not remember even what. It was yogurt or something. And she saw that he didn't have uh, boots, winter boots. So uh, she, she, she said, why don't you come with me? I have two older boys, and they don't need the boots anymore. I'll give it, I'll give it to them, to, to you. So this is how my, my boy got the boots. But it was a very important signal for me. I'm a responsible person, and I have to change something in my life. So I took off my diploma from the drawer, and I went to the bank. So I applied, and this is how I'm 21 years in the bank, in the banking system. So what, is the, what are the morals from this, from this story? For me, because you know the story with the dots that you see after years, how they form into a picture. First, the important thing is that when there is a misery, when, when you have to act, you have to act. You have to think how you have to change the situation. Number two, when you invest in something, and I invested a lot in being an economist, you have to make use of it. This was my profession. I'm happy that I'm exercising this profession. Because if you invest in something, if you have the greatest diplomas in the world and you put them in the drawer and you don't use them, it's a loss. Yeah, life sucks because of this. And uh, number three is the fact that sometimes there are opportunities in our life. We have to see them, grab them and make use of them. And by the way, I uh, 
I still play music because I love it. It's a part of what I am. I have a kind of a studio in my house and I give one or two concerts per, per year and I like it very much. Okay, so this is the first story and this is the first pointer. Once again, being aware and then comes the act appropriate. And then let, let me come to the second one. The point with the motivational system. So motivational systems is built up of motivational drivers. The motivational drivers are those values and those moral principles with which we live. They could change in every single moment in life. But they are the ones that this define our thoughts and define our behavior. So there are a lot of theories in this, but I believe in one of the concepts which says that there are negative motivational drivers and positive motivational drivers. The negative motivational drivers are, for instance, self-assertion. I'm right, you're wrong. It happens. It happens at home every day. It happens on the street in the traffic jam. It happens at work. It happens on the political arena. Then being driven by anger. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You cannot do this to me. Or being driven by fear. Or being driven by shame. All these negative drivers driving our thoughts, driving our behavior. They give birth to negative output. You cannot give birth to something positive being driven by negative drivers. So, what's the end? What's the way out? Let's look at the positive drivers. I explore the world, yeah, like the little child, making another step and another step to see what's going on. This is what we create for us and for the others. And then seeing that the others exist and cooperate with them, cooperate with them, and then make service, give service to the others. Or like Mozart and, and uh, Usain Bolt, develop your talents so that you're one of the masters in what you do in the world. So, it, 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 by the way, um, I remember a great story of this guy next to me who changed dramatically three years ago. So would you tell us about this transformation? Sure. Um, three years ago I was a totally different person. It's hard to, for me now to sing to, to Andre three years ago. <laughs> And um, I was in total apathy, and um, I had no motivation to change anything in my life or uh, in the world, generally. And um, my main drive was to come home, you know, stay on the couch, watch TV, drink a beer, maybe two or three, and um, then uh, watch three, four hours the TV, and uh, the fact was that I was absorbing all the negative energy that the TV shows usually transmit to you, and I was further uh, transmitting those emotions to the people around me, uh, including my family, my friends, colleagues, and so on. Fortunately, one day, um, my little boy, uh, Alex, uh, he was one year and a few months back then, um, came next to me on the couch when I was uh, in total apathy and changing fast, uh, uh, switching the, the TV channels, and he started to imitating me, you know, which is not a, a pleasant sight because he basically put the mirror in front of me and said, Daddy, look, this is what you do and uh, this is what I will become, you know? And I was horrified, thinking that uh, my son will become like me, you know, uh, just uh, you know, living an ordinary life and uh, switching the channels. Um, maybe make a decision, a sudden decision. I said, okay, I will change. Not tomorrow, not in 10 days from now on, but today I will change and uh, do something in my life in order to become a model for my son. I didn't know exactly how, but this was the feeling. And I decided to, to choose a goal so high that um, I, I, I could not basically achieve it unless transforming myself in a person that really can achieve that goal. So um, I registered to endurance runs like North Pole, Antarctica, Sahara, Himalaya, and so on. Just making sure that I, uh, I improve myself daily and I would become uh, a role model for, for my son. And I think uh, it was a, a very important decision in my life. Um, I'm thankful to, to my son, he's uh, basically my first teacher. And um, I encourage you to, uh, as Stan says, to be more open to what uh, children, what signals they transmit. Uh, By the way, you probably know that, probably not, 
that Andre is the first man in the world, and it's recorded in the Guinness Book, who ran seven marathons and seven ultra marathons on seven continents. So, congratulations, and, and uh, I'm happy to know him. And by the way, last week, this guy also became an Iron Man. Do you know what Iron Man is? Yeah. yeah? Okay. And there is something interesting, by the way, behind it. Uh, Andre didn't know how to swim a year ago. And now he's an Iron Man. Would you tell us about this, Andre? Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite a funny story. Uh, first of all, I'll make a break. Uh, Iron Man is a triathlon. Um, you have to swim 3.8 kilometers in open water, usually <coughs> cold water. Um, you swim together with 2,000 people, usually you have a lot of punches and hitting you, and you need to survive there. Uh, most of the people who died uh, in Ironman events died during the, the swim, the swim part. After these uh, 3.8 kilometers, you have to bike for 180 kilometers. And one year ago, the maximum I, um, I biked was around 5 or 10 kilometers. And then uh, you have to run a marathon, and all this in uh, a maximum seven, uh, 17 hours. And uh, I remember my first swimming lesson one, one year ago when I decided I, I, should, uh, I should learn. I decided this, there shouldn't be a limit uh, regarding the age when you can uh, learn how to swim properly and crawl. And I was uh, near the pool with uh, six or seven children with, uh, with floats. They were laughing because uh, I was like this, they were six, seven years old, and uh, um, the, the swimming teacher asked us to do some some exercise. I, uh, I uh, drank a lot of uh, chlorine water and I almost vomited, but I was committed to, to improve, and after one, one month I could uh, swim crawl, which was pretty good, and day by day I improved, so I'm, uh, I'm very happy to, to have learned that. And one week ago I finished my first Iron Man, and it was uh, the best sensation that one can get really in the sport activity. Yeah. Okay, so.